Okay. Next we have Simone Minardi who will be talking about augmented network visibility with the help of sub-minute resolution metrics. Thank you very much. Or give him a hand. Hello. Mm, thanks for being here today. And yes, in this presentation, we are going to see actually the benefits of having high resolution metrics in the field of network visibility. And then in the second part of this presentation, we are going to try and use open source software to build an actual uh, network visibility solution. And we will see NTOPNG for the monitoring, Grafana for the visualization, and NFluxDB for the store of data. But let's start with network visibility. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So, well, let's start with network visibility. In general, network visibility is provided by means of metrics. These metrics can be simple metrics, such as the bytes and packets transmitted or received by a given host or by a network. There can be also other metrics that include layer 7 application protocols. For example, the amount of uh, YouTube traffic done by this host or by this network. But there, there can also be more complex metrics such as moving averages, uh, exponentially weighted averages, this kind of uh, metrics. But the point is that metrics are sampled. This means that there is no way to have a 100% reliable, accurate representation of the real metric because we only have samples of the metric. This means that at fixed interval of time, we pick the value of the metric. So basically, uh, there is uh, an amount of time which is basically equal to the sampling interval that is completely unknown. This means that, let, let, let's take this these, uh, these, uh, chart for example. We have a metric and its evolution in time and we have two samples, S1 and S2. Between S1 and S2, nothing is known. Nothing can be said. We don't have an idea of the behavior of the metric between S1 and S2. So it could have followed the green path, the yellow or the blue path, but in practice, actually, we don't know. We have only S1 and S2. So it, it's pretty clear now that the shorter the sampling interval, the closer we can go to the actual metric, the closer we can go to the real metric. So it's beneficial to be able to reduce this sampling interval. Let me show you this with an example. In this example, I'm going to transfer 10 gigabytes of traffic, two times. The first time I'm going to transfer this 10 gigs over a free link and the second time I'm going to transfer the same 10 gigs over a fully utilized link. And I would like to show you what happens if we use five minute sample on one hand and 10 second samples on the other hand. To do this experiment and to make it reproducible, I'm going to use iPerf to send the data and NTOPNG to actually do the monitoring. And we are going to see NTOPNG in detail later in this presentation. So let's start with a five minute samples. The first bell shaped curve that we see in this chart is the metric of traffic captured during the 10 gigs transfer with a free link. The second bell shaped curve is the same metric, the same traffic metric captured during the 
10 gigs file transfer over the fully utilized, over the congested link. Do you see any difference? No. The two bell-shaped curves are the same. So it's completely uh, undetectable, the fact that the link was congested, if we use five-minute samples. Let's see now what happens if we go from five minutes to 10-second samples. Well, as we can see from this chart, uh, this is a different story. The first file transfer, it's a beautiful straight transfer. And as we see, the, the metric almost immediately reaches the line rate of one gigabit per second. And it's, it, it does a steady transfer and it completes in a very short interval of time. If we look at the transfer over the congested link, that's, that's really different because we see that the throughput is not even one half of the throughput done over the free link. And there is also a so tooth behavior that we can see in this chart. So you see, going from five minute samples down to 10 second samples actually unveils patterns that are interesting and that are completely unnoticed if we use five minute samples. Again, these two charts, if you look at the time, at the time scale at the bottom, these two charts are two instances of a monitoring tool that are running and monitoring the same traffic, but one is taking samples at five minutes and the other is taking samples at 10 seconds. So why we should care about this? Well, there are many reasons. Let's see, we should care about having an high resolution, for example, to have a more accurate representation of the throughput that is received by our applications that use the network, because there are certain applications that are sensitive to the throughput, for example, VoIP calls or video streaming, this kind of application have certain requirements in terms of minimum throughput. And if we can't guarantee this kind of uh, throughput, uh, then the user experience can, can worsen, the application performance can worsen, so being able to monitor the throughput in an accurate way can help you in improving or even providing a good service for your applications. Similarly, another thing that you can do is to look at bursts, bursts that can go unnoticed if you use five minutes and one minute samples. Because bursts are not really good for the networks because bursts tend to uh, fill the queues of your network elements, so they tend to introduce jitters or increase the delays of the transmissions. So bars are, are not really good in the networks and being able to spot them can help you fix certain kind of issues. Okay, so now that we have seen the motivation and the, how useful it can be to have high resolution metrics, let's see how we can build a solution using open source software. What do we need to build this solution? Basically, we need three pieces of software. We need a software that can do the monitoring and that can see the packets, so it can provide high resolution, it can generate high resolution metrics. Then we need a data store, a data store that is able to ingest high resolution metrics and provide timely response to the queries. Because if we, if we use high resolution metrics, we end up in generating 100 millions of points per day in real world networks, in corporate networks. So we need a really good data store that can on the one hand store the metrics and on the other hand provide you response to your queries in a, in a timely way. And least but not last, we need a visualization tool that can show us the relevant behavior that can allow us to do their drill down and to detect 
or to analyze the the analyze and alert on our traffic. So the solution we have proposed is composed of three open source software and OpenG for the monitoring, InfluxDB for the store of data, and Grafana for the visualization. I'm not going to go into the details of InfluxDB or Grafana. I mean, we have had Carl right before me. So what, what, what I would like to focus now is uh, EntopNG, the monitoring tool, because I am one of the developers of EntopNG. And I would like to tell you how we brought EntopNG from five minutes samples down to 10 second samples for the generation of 10 second samples. So EntopNG is open source. Uh, you can fork it on GitHub. You can download and try it. It's just a, an open source software for the monitoring of your network. And we, we have 3,300 stars now on GitHub and counting. So feel free to download it and test it. So the architecture of EntopNG is multi-threaded. This means that basically we have one thread that is reserved for the capture of packets. And then we have other threads that run in parallel and are reserved for the generation of samples. So in our recent activity, in our recent work, we, we extend those parallel threads for the metrics generation, and we, we change them so that they can provide metrics at up to a resolution of 10 seconds. So we were using RRDs. RRDs are another store for metrics based on plain text files, so based on files. That is basically used if you want sample in the order of uh, minutes, basically. Otherwise, you, it will be too slow. So we extended EntopNG to produce 10 second samples and to push those samples to the InfluxDB database. So how easy it is to set up and configure EntopNG to generate 10 second samples of your traffic using InfluxDB? Well, it's pretty easy because you just visit the configuration. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration in a while, but it's pretty easy. You just visit the preferences of EntopNG you set up the URL of InfluxDB, a database name, and you are done. And OpenG will start pushing data into InfluxDB. And on the other hand, if you want to build uh, your dashboards using Grafana, for example, what you have to do is only add a data source to Grafana, an InfluxDB data source, to actually connect to the same database used by EntopNG. InfluxDB host, database name, and you are done. With Grafana, you can start playing, you can start doing experiment and creating dashboards, for example. And as we can see in these, uh, in these two charts, I have recreated the same dashboard of the, of the, the file transfers. I've recreated the same dashboard using Grafana, and as we can see, Obviously, there is a 100% match between the two charts because Grafana and EntopNG are both pooling data from InfluxDB for the visualization. The other interesting thing that you can do with Grafana is the alerting. Alerting that now you can bring down to a 10 seconds resolution. This means that you can evaluate condition every 10 seconds. So you can set an easy, an easy threshold. If you, have, if you want to monitor a web server, you can set a, a threshold to be timely alerted if the traffic of your web server goes above a certain threshold or goes below a certain threshold. The point here, the interesting thing here, is that you can create alerts with a an evaluation frequency of 10 seconds. So 
you can receive a notification, you can receive an email very, very quickly when something happens. Let me show you now uh, a quick demo. I want to show you how easy it is to set up uh, this kind of 10-second uh, monitoring using our using the tools. Okay. So here I'm going to start NTOPNG, which is the first tool for the monitoring of data. Do not look at the other options that are not really relevant for this uh, for this demo. The the interesting thing here is that we are going to run NTOP NG using interface ENO1. I'm going to start it. So now it's it has started monitoring the traffic on this laptop. So now I'm basically monitoring the network traffic that my laptop here is doing from and to the internet. Yeah, because I need to start. Now I can also start InfluxDB, same thing. So now, yes, I have started InfluxDB. So NTOPNG is generating 10 second samples and posting them to the InfluxDB running on the same host. Third, I also run Grafana because I would like to, to see the, the dashboard in, in action. Okay, so let's see what happened. I can point my browser to localhost 3000. I have created a dashboard here. Here we are. So this is a dashboard that I have created using the Grafana and connecting to the InfluxDB that is storing our 10 second samples of the traffic. I created a dashboard that, that is showing me the throughput of the network interface and the traffic of certain relevant application protocols, including DNS, Dropbox, and Google. So this is the traffic. What uh, I can do now is to create something more interesting. Maybe I can set a time interval of now minus five minutes. And I can create, can set a refresh of five seconds. So this dashboard is going to refresh every five seconds. And let's see if we can generate some interesting uh, traffic. Let me do, I'm going to download uh, an ISO of Ubuntu. And if I go back to the dashboard, I, we, will, we see that the throughput has increased to almost 60 megabits per second. And you also have the throughput in bytes and packets shown right into a Grafana dashboard. You can use Grafana. I mean, Grafana is a very useful way to create your own dashboards. And you can pull also metrics from other data sources. So you are not limited to the use of NTOPNG because Maybe you have another data source that is monitoring the number of uh, requests and response of your web application. So you can combine in the same dashboard the chart of the interface throughput with the chart of your HTTP requests, for example, to detect certain kind of anomalies or to detect peaks in the HTTP or in the response errors of your of your application. So, yes, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's almost everything what I wanted to to show you now. So, let me wrap up. So we have seen that having high resolution metric can unveil certain patterns that go, uh, that are unknown or unnoticeable if we use five minute samples or if we use lower resolution samples. 
If you want to build your own monitoring solution, you can do that using open source software and TopNG, InfluxDB, and Grafana. And least but not last, we are growing and we are hiring. So if you are interested, if you like networks, if you love packets, let's contact us. I mean, we will be around the whole day, so contact us. You can work from remote. We are based in Italy, but you can work from remote if you want. So contact us, and we can start doing something together. That is my email. Thanks for your time. If you have questions, I, I'm here. So please feel free to question. Thank you. Yes. Okay, let's wait the mic, okay? Hi. So on the demo, you showed applications in the graph, like Dropbox and Google. Yeah. How do you distinguish that? And do you yeah. have to create a dashboard to filter for that yeah, specific sure. application, or can it be dynamically populated? Or yeah. So EntopNG has an engine which is, co which is called uh, Deep Packet Inspection. It performs a deep packet inspection of the real traffic packets to detect the actual protocol that is flowing in that particular time. So let me show you this. I can edit this stuff. And as you see, I do an InfluxDB query on the deep packet inspection, IFAS DPI, and I can change the protocol. And here I have all my protocols that have been dissected by EntopNG. So I can pick another one. I can pick HTTP, I can pick Google, GitHub, uh, or whatever you want, Instagram. So you create the dashboards of the layer 7 application protocols that are traversing your network. So those are application protocols. So this means that is the layer 7 payload. So it's not a layer 4 protocol such as TCP or UDP. It's the actual application carried in the layer 7. Um, I question um, the interval at the end hop agent pushes the 10 second interval uh, measurements to the um, influx DB, uh, is it uh, f still five minutes or is it also 10 seconds? No, you can choose that. You can choose that. Okay. Let Not only the, the measurement interval, but also the, the push interval. Huh? Because it collects every 10 seconds the, the interface statistics and it pushes it. Uh, the statistics uh, to the database yes. also every 10 seconds or every five minutes? Oh, the push is, is basically every 10 seconds, also the push to the database. Okay. You so can control the flash, but uh, the point is that statistics are every 10 seconds. So you may see them with a little bit of delay in the database, but once they are in the database, they are 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, question, how are you doing downsampling of data in InfluxDB, if you are doing downsampling? Yeah, we are doing downsampling. We are using continuous queries. This is one of the latest development. Yeah, you but need to roll up. then you save them to some other data source time uh, metric in InfluxDB, and then you have to select another data source to see the historical metrics or what? Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, yeah. yeah. And hi, Simon. Hi. <laughs> um, so obviously what you're saying is 10 seconds is better than 5 minutes, I assume then... It's not one... necessarily better. It could be useful, depending okay, on what... You get more use. resolution, yeah. for example, and then maybe 1 second is more resolution than 10 seconds. Yeah. What are the main sticking points or problems going lower and lower resolution? Well, the, the lower you can go, the the more close to the real metrics you can get. The point is, do you really need to go so close to the real metric? The answer is, it depends. It depends on what you are looking. The, there is a phenomenon that is called microbars. 
So microbursts because they happen at the microseconds, during microseconds events. So they can create troubles in the network as well. You could be interested in inspecting microbursts. If you, if you need to inspect microbursts, yes, you need to go to the microsecond resolution. So you need hardware timestampings, you need a dedicated network cards, you can do that. So it depends. It depends. The answer is it depends. So the higher the resolution, the more you can see. This is for sure. But it depends. You can be happy also with five minutes. I, mean, I don't know. It, uh, it depends. This is plain Ethernet uh, sniffing, let's say. Yeah, this Did is you Ethernet sniffing. Overlay networks like VXLAN and stuff like, like that. Like what? VXLAN. Yes. I mean, provided that you can access the traffic, you can do this kind of monitoring. To do these 10 second samples, you need the traffic. So if you have an uh, overlay network, say, if you have VXLAN, you can do that provided that you can find a way to feed and open G with the traffic that you want to monitor. Hello. Hello. Um, so you are not working with RRD files anymore, right? Say it again. You are not working with RRD files anymore, right? No, it, it's an, you, you can choose that. It's, a, it's an option. You can choose if you want to use RRDs or if you want to use InfluxDB. Okay. Both of them are supported. Okay. About the alerts, um, uh, do you send them to EntopenG from Grafana? Or? I mean, Grafana has an alerting engine built in, and EntopenG has another alerting engine built in. You can do email. Slack notification, this kind of, uh, of alert. So you can create them in EntopenG or in Grafana. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, right. it's up to you. And um, as um, EntopenG is an open source uh, solution, I don't know if you have this information, but uh, do you know uh, how much um, host is uh, enterprises monitoring with EntopenG? How, how does it scale? Yeah, it, it scales up to tens of thousands of hosts inside the enterprise. It can monitor many more hosts, but if you have an enterprise, you are interested in having more information for the hosts inside the network. So EntopenG divides the host between your enterprise network and the rest of the world. So this is done for, the, for efficiency, basically, to save memory and to for the efficiency of the software. So it can scale up, let's say, to 40, 50,000 enterprise hosts plus 100,000 hosts outside your network, your enterprise network. But uh, you use different instances of EntopenG? And, no, or a single instance. Single. You, one for five, uh, 50,000 hosts? Yeah. Singles. And then if you want to monitor more, you need to set up another one? Yes, yes. You can set up parallel, uh, parallel instances. Yeah, but they don't talk with each other, right? They won't talk with each other. Okay. Thank you. Just a note. Um, I know you guys are not, and girls are not aware of this, but if you keep talking in the back, in front this is relatively loud. Of course, this room has really good or bad acoustics. We can debate this. But please... Keep it quiet, thank you. Um, a question related to a previous one. If you have ever experimented with use cases where uh, um, the resolution is very fine-grained, like in milliseconds or something, and if yes, which are the most critical aspects to be considered in this kind of workflow and architecture, in this kind, specific kind of use cases, because the data volume could grow yeah, considerably. Yeah. Actually, I didn't work on the on millisecond scales, so I, I didn't even try to push data into InfluxDB and chart them with Grafana. So I don't have an answer. In term. We have worked on uh, we have worked on microbars, but not using this uh, this solution. So I don't have an exact answer for, for this. Thanks. Hi. 
Thanks for the talk. Um, I'm just wondering if you're doing a lot of high frequency sampling, uh, how does that scale in terms of resources? What way is it managing RAM or CPU usage? Now say it again. I'm just wondering if you're doing a lot of high frequency sampling, what way does it scale in terms of resources? How are you handling the likes of RAM or CPU usage if you're doing a lot of, uh, lot yes. of sampling? So the point is that EntopenG is real time, so it sees all the packets. The fact that we are generating uh, samples at 10 seconds, at, it's not really pushing more pressure and top NG wise, because it is already processing and inspecting every single packet. So the point is just running another thread that every 10 seconds crunches some st statistics, which is not really what impacts the performance of the software of of EntopNG. InfluxDB wise, I can really tell you the impact. I didn't do the certain performance or load misuration if we go from 5 minutes to 10 seconds. So, InfluxDB wise, I can really tell you. EntopNG wise, I can tell you that this is not what is putting the highest pressure on on the software because EntopNG per se is real time. So it, it already sees every single packet and it inspects every single packet that is monitored. Any other question? Okay, so thanks for your time.